slowly rotating at the edge of deep space, 1,000 kilometers beyond the atmosphere of 21st century Earth, is the Arthur C. Clarke Astronomical Observatory, Starlab. Here, Starlab Research Director Maura Cassidy, along with the scientists and technicians of the International Space Authority, watch over the countless stars and planets that fill the silent distances beyond the giant space station. This week, the men and women of Starlab encounter the terrifying dissonance of death song on alien worlds. <laughs> After spending five days at the Sea Lab 7 underwater research station in the South Pacific, ISA Commissioner White arrives at Star Lab aboard Earth Shuttle 1. Hello, Maura. Jerry. Hi, Commissioner. Hello, Commissioner. How are John and Buddy doing with their aquanaut training? They'll be in Sea Lab 7 until Friday. Then they move to the Baltic for 10 days in the Soviet Aqualab complex at Chilenka. They like being underwater so much, you'll probably have to keep them in your aquarium when they get back. <laughs> Figures. Star Lab! Star Lab! Can you hear me? This is Star Lab. Please identify yourself. We are Zayna and Lizzie, two optimum physicians from the planet Aragon. Please give us sanctuary. What's your situation? Get a visual scan on them, Jerry. Right. There it is. My God, it's enormous. Star Lab, this is Whitney again. Did you understand our last transmission? Be careful, Jerry. That ship doesn't look damaged to me. Uh, Whitney, we have your spacecraft on visual as a large corrugated black disc with red, yellow, and green markings. And we see no sign of damage. That's all, Star Lab. Thank you, Medicaid. Our ship is bell shaped and silver. There it is, lower left hand corner of the screen. It's so small. No wonder we didn't see it. Magnify it, Jerry. Jeez, look at that. The hull's full of cracks all the way down to the tail fins. Open the emergency docking bay, Jerry. Right. Whippy, guide your ship toward the docking bay that's surrounded with flashing red lights, and we'll take you aboard. suddenly interrupted by an emergency transmission from an incoming alien starship. Aboard the ship, Withy and Zena, two Octavon physicians from the planet Aragon. We are being pursued by a hostile renegade spacecraft, which has already damaged our ship. If you don't give us sanctuary, the renegade will destroy us. As the bell-shaped Aragonian starship moves into visual scanner range, Mora, Jerry, and Commissioner White see another spacecraft. Huge, black, and disc-shaped. I am Elon. With the Anthenas Pursuer. Open a close proximity channel, Jerry. Go ahead, Commissioner. Elon, this is Commissioner White of the International Space Authority. 
I represent the scientific and military forces in this solar system. Do you understand that? I understand. Any hostile action against this space station will be construed as an act of war against the Earth and will be dealt with accordingly. Do you understand that? I understand. What's your planet of origin? Aragon. I see. Well, are you a legal officer of some kind? Have the two Octavon physicians committed a crime? To my way of thinking, they have. Dr. Cassidy, this is Simon down in the emergency docking bay. The alien ship is secure. All right, Simon, thank you. Commissioner, I think we've heard enough from Helon to know where he's at. Let's put him on a hold and see what the two physicians have to say about... Uh, well, whatever this is about. Helon, stay on this frequency and I'll get back to you. I need some time to think about what you've said. Of course you do, Commissioner. And then you'll need time to conspire with Willie and Zena against me. And then there will be no more time, Commissioner. And the last thing you'll hear is the sound of your own screaming. Again, the, the two aliens have come out of their ship. Bring them to my quarters right away, Simon. Let's go, Commissioner. I don't know, Mora. Except for Stygos and the Trell, we've never had to deal with this kind of hostile alien power before. Dr. Cassidy. Hello, Simon. Where are the two aliens? Well, they're kind of shy. Have them come in, Simon. We won't bite. Withy, Zena, it's all right. You can go in. Oh, my gosh, they're elves. Little blue elves. It's obvious what a surprise we are. All because of the size we are. But just because you're tall and pink and we are short and blue. The fact is you are as strange to us as the two of us are to you. kilometers beyond Star Lab, Helon enters the audiogenic spectrum chamber of his slowly orbiting ship. He touches a bright red jewel near the entryway. The gleaming black metal floor slides open. Then something begins to rise up out of the opening. Something massive and angular and dark. A nightmare construct of polyphonic drone generators and ultrasonic inverters, thick spiraling amplifier coils, and blood-red keyboards. Helon's death song synthesizer, the Cathedron. My beautiful Cathedron, my phantom self, my soul. Soon we will hear their voices dying amid the music of an unexpected destiny. Elon, it's time. Time? Time for what, Katrak? My infusion. It's time for my infusion. I just gave you a death song infusion, Katrak, a few moments ago, up in the communications chamber. No, you didn't, Elon. That wasn't my infusion. That was the premonition of Agio you transmitted to Star Lab. It was. <laughs> oh, yes, of course it was. Forgive me, Cataract. Perhaps we should share an infusion. Memory distortion is one of the primal symptoms of death song withdrawal. Yeah, yes, of course. An infusion. Here, yeah, Cataract. Help me with the anthem injectors. With pleasure. Thank you. 
I wish Dr. Rossiter were back from Kronos. She'd love this. Zena, you said that Helon was once an Octavon physician. What changed him? against the fiery coronas of eclipsing suns. Death song. Yes, Planets will vanish in screaming disintegration. Death song. Yes, Raging through the silence. Transforming it into deafening articulations of infinite majesty. Death song. Death song. Death song. Beyond Starlab, Helon's huge, black, ovaloid spacecraft continues its slow, concentric parking orbit. In the ship's autogenic spectrum chamber, Helon sits before the blood-red multiple keyboards of the Death Song Cathedron. Petrak, go into the communications chamber, contact Commissioner White, and say this. My ship will orbit six more times. If at the beginning of the seventh orbit, Withy and Zena have not surrendered, Death Song will take the lives of every multivibrational organism aboard Starlab. Yes, Helon. Never been more than 12 octagon positions. 
12 physicians for an entire planet? 12 are enough for us. Injuries are rare on Aragon, and illness is relatively non-existent. What was Aragon like before the Octavons were created? We treated the diseases of the mind and body with narcotic chemicals. As a result, the people of Aragon were in a constant state of neurotic irresponsibility. Mora, are you there? What is it, Jerry? I have a transmission coming through from Helon's ship. We'll be right there. Suppose you and Withy give Helon your octavons. What then? So here we are with a 250 megawatt solar reactor and no way to use it against Helon. No weapon system, no communications, no shielding generators. Our reactor wasn't affected at all. If we can interface our two octavons with your reactor, we can defeat him. All right. Let's get down to the reactor control room and get set up. How much time do we have, Jerry? Mm, one minute, 30 seconds. Helon just started his fifth orbit. Withy, what effect will this have on Helon? He will die. Die? But you said you wanted to help him. Taking his life is the only way that we can recall him to life, Laura. Our octobonds will terminate him and then infuse him with the frequencies of his earlier life. How will you know if you've been successful? His voice, Commissioner. You will hear it with his voice. Harmonize the octobon, Zena, and tune for maximum pulse inflection. Engage the primary and ancillary sub-articulations. Ultrasonic articulations are included. Cross-link reactor output subterminals, Jerry. Subterminals are in phase. Maximum quantum injection.
We must call to you, Laura. Call the short-range vehicle hangar, Jerry. Tell them to get a shuttle ready. Elon. Elon. Cataract, my friend. Forgive me. Please forgive me. Winnie, Zena, Cataract is dying. Give you a hand. Wendy. Zena. Thank you for calling me from the darkness. We are your brothers, Elon. We are your friends. Michelle Goodman, Lindsay V. Jones, and Tony Walters. Music director, Tom Rounds, with special music effects composed and performed by Rick Kellis. Associate producer and song lyrics by Ron Thompson. Engineer, Stu Jacobs. Assistant to the producer, Jim Cook. Technical consultant, Peter Skye. Alien Worlds was created, produced, and directed by Lee Hansen. And so until next week, this is Roger Dressler inviting you to join us for our next adventure, The Infinity Factor, from the elsewhere and elsewhen of Alien Worlds. <laughs>